What is up, coaster people? Today we are going to be talking about the brand new for 2020 GCI Wooden Coaster Texas Stingray, located at SeaWorld San Antonio in San Antonio, Texas. I was able to get about 25 day and night rides in, spanning second train of the night to last train of the night, so I feel like I really got a good idea of what this ride can do and what it's about. To start off, this ride dominates the skyline in the back of the park. SeaWorld is going through this transitional phase of phasing out shows in favor for big new coaster additions. As a result, this is leaving some awkward gaps in the park's flow that SeaWorld is working to remedy with additions like Texas Stingray and Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando. First off, as you get closer to the ride queue, the intoxicating aroma of fresh wood begins to guide your way as you stumble upon the minimalistic yet sleek queue line. I really enjoy how simplistic the sign and the queue line in general are. As your Millennium Flyer enters the station, you'll notice GCI did a little extra with this one as the Stingray mounted to the Zero car is aesthetically gorgeous. To my surprise, as you board your train, you're greeted to a lack of seatbelts. If you think the GP went nuts about Candemonium, wait until they see this. You take a right-hand turn out of the station and immediately begin ascending the 96-foot lift. Once at the top, you take another right into what I call a rolling drop, something Gravity Group does very well in the Intamin perfected with El Toro. This 100-foot drop is loaded with airtime, a change from their usual bank curve drops that I find super underwhelming. This entire ride to me feels more like a gravity group, which I think speaks to how GCI is modernizing. Not to get too far off topic, immediately after the drop, you go flying to what could have easily been an incredible running airtime hill, then set as a small pop of airtime into two large curve drops. While I'd have preferred the airtime, both moments provide some great lateral forces that'll only get better with age. This is where the ride begins to excel. Following in the second curve drop, you start ripping through the layout, hitting almost a sideways airtime moment as you're popped up and whipped to your left before hitting another very solid airtime hill. Probably the best moment on the ride at this point. This is quickly outdone as following in another strong ejector moment, you hit a phenomenal directional airtime hill. I mean, if you were sitting in the back left seat, you are absolutely launched up before being sucked back down in the opposite direction through another airtime pop and into almost a trick track slash wave turn type deal. It's a very quick but satisfying pop of sideways airtime that I feel really adds to this layout. After this, the ride really begins to lose momentum. You had a very shallow airtime hill before a 180 degree turnaround that sends you right through another very weak airtime hill. This may be remedied as the ride breaks in and runs a bit faster, but only time will tell. Then comes the best portion of the ride, the finale. Out of nowhere, you go from meandering to falling off a cliff into the tunnel. I mean, this moment hits you out of nowhere and feels like such a strong, raw moment of air. At night, it is absolutely pitch black and you lose every sense of direction. You feel like you're flying after this as you maneuver twists, turns, and one last strong airtime hill before hitting the brake run. This ride was a huge letdown early in the morning, but with each ride, it got incrementally warmer and began to roar through its layout by the time the night rides came. I've ridden every North American GCI aside from Apocalypse and Gold Striker, and Texas Stingray falls number two behind Mystic Timbers. Overall, this is a very good woody that will only get better over time, featuring a very unique layout for a GCI filled with not only strong laterals, but some impressive airtime moments. But what keeps it out of my top 10 is some very spotty pacing, and frankly some dead elements in the heart of the layout. If this ride stayed the way it started and finished, this would no question be a top tier woody, but for now I think it settles nicely as SeaWorld San Antonio's new anchor to the lineup the number one of a very solid top three. I absolutely cannot wait to see how this thing runs on a blistering July Texas day. This was a great fit for SeaWorld, filling a void that three other top Texas parks have while also bolstering their lineup and putting themselves back on the map. I highly recommend making a trip out to SeaWorld San Antonio this summer. Let me know how I did in the comments below and make sure to subscribe for the rest of the 2020 coaster reviews. And until then, as always, ride on.